places to take the children um, because I get a lot of complaints that there's nowhere safe for the kids to ride their bikes and to roller skate and that kind of thing and to play sports. So what I'm very excited to tell you is that um, we were able to get uh, half a million dollars into the budget and this is for the Waianae uh, Regional Park area. And that's the land between Waianae High School and Waianae Boulevard. It's 19 acres of land. And the city, for many years, had a plan to put a park there. And it was going to have sports fields uh, for football, baseball, soccer. There was going to be a pavilion there and a park area. And um, for various reasons, they, didn't, they, didn't, they weren't able to finish the plan. So my goal is to try to finish that. And so phase one of it is to bring the Ayala canoe back, um, which is an ancient voyaging canoe that was built on the Waianae coast but uh, has been in, in Sand Island for many years. So we're going to try to use that half million dollars to bring the Ayala back to the high end of that property. Phase two of, of it is going to be to seek further funds, a grant and aid, to then develop the rest of that, that park. That, you know, 19 acres, and we want to put the sports fields. We also going to bring a pathway, like they have at Magic Island. So there's a pathway going all the way around. And you can, uh, kids can, see, uh, can be safely on their bikes and stuff. And then possibly teacher houses as well. So that's one of the small ways that I, I, I want to help. Um, I think the more that we can have activities for that's safe for youth and for families to keep them away from drugs, keep them, you know, keep them um, out of negative things and doing positive things like for their bodies and learning about their culture. Uh, I think we really go a long way. As soon as you said that, I thought, we'll and I want to duplicate said, that throughout the course. Once you said that, how can we inspire others to take action in our community? Um, oh, another very good question, Precious. How can we inspire others to take action in the community? Um, I think, number one, we've got to get more people to register to vote. Um, I myself often, you know, I often thought that my vote didn't count too before I became involved in politics. And I thought, why even bother? It's a pain. You gotta, you know, fill out these forms and stand in line, all these things. Not even worth my time. Now that I'm in politics, I realize that exercising your right to vote is the first step towards empowering yourself and realizing that we are so lucky to live in a democracy where your opinion really does count, where you have freedom of speech. Um, you can say, you know, I don't like this current senator. I want somebody else to run. You know, I want to run myself. You know, but. People, you have to, you, you can't just pass this it back. You, know, you got to exercise it. And an example I like to tell is the story of how one of my colleagues, Roy Takumi, um, was in the House. One year, he won an election by three votes. And so if those three people had said, my vote doesn't count, doesn't matter, he would have lost, you know. And so your vote really does count. And another example I like to give is that it's very well known where people vote. And so, if you look at the headlines, they often will say that the Waianae Coast has the lowest voter turnout, which we do. It's about 20% of the people vote. It's only one in every five people who vote on this coast. And that is part of the reason that we don't get anything, you know, because we have very limited resources, you know, for in, in the state. You always hear about the big budget deficit and everything, right? So, often if it's a question of, you know, okay, we only have one million dollars, and we have two different communities that need the money. Why that coast needs money, and then but then Honolulu needs money too. And if you're the governor and you have to decide who's going to get this money, one of the factors I'm sure is going to be who votes, right? You know, it's like okay, only 20% of people vote in Waianae, but we got 50% voting in Honolulu. You know, I want to get reelected. I'm going to have to give the money to Honolulu. You know, and so little things like that is just a big a start um, as to how you can empower yourself, get involved. And then, then once you start doing that, you realize, wow, you know, my, my voice really does count. You know, you'd be surprised how many bills get through the legislature um, because just a few people speak up. You know, there's a, a bill that um, people that live in Mayor Wright wanted, a public housing project, and they were really... Um, upset because a lot of gang activity happens where they live. So they introduced a bill that would say that anytime someone wants to come into Mayor Rights, they have to have an ID, <laughs> okay. have to get registered, okay. um, so and, and they have to yeah, and get pre-approved. And it was fought. ACLU and other people didn't like it. And for legal reasons, you know, 
Um, but there was four, like three or four guys that came from that shelter, the tenants, and they testified very passionately about how many you know people are dying. There's gunshots. There's things, and I was really, all of us, really moved by this. There's these three guys that came to testify, and the bill made it. You know, and so. Little things like that, you know, you think that you're not important, but you really are, uh, especially in a democracy where none of us can get elected unless you vote for us, you know, and, um, and where, you know, bills don't get through, you know, unless people come to support and testify. So, uh, <laughs> my little two cents. Okay, and the last question <laughs> is, what do you have to say about the things that happen in our community? What are the no, things that happen in our community? Um, well, I have to say that I love representing the Wine Night Coast because we are one of the very few places on this island where the Hawaiian culture is alive and well. You know, um, you know, if you if you go to Honolulu or you know town, um, you often forget you're in Hawaii. You know, you could, you know, because you don't really see the Hawaiian culture. You don't hear it spoken. Um, you don't see many Hawaiian people. Um, and, and yeah, it's, it's, it's sad, you know, when I, I've experienced that myself many times. Um, here in Waianae, it's not like that, you know, because we have the highest concentration of wines in the whole world, in this little stretch of coast that we have. Um, and so we're very, very fortunate that this is a place where, you know, you see Hawaiian people, you hear the language, um, they practice their customs and their culture, and it's just normal, you know. It's not like that everywhere else in the world. And that's what makes our community very special. Um, us also being so isolated is another thing. You know, because of that, we all know each other, and um, there's really strong relationships to each other, and a sense of responsibility. Um, you know, and that most people, a lot of times I'll meet someone, they'll be like, I know your mom, and I knew your grandma, and I knew your mom. You know, you probably get that too, right? And so it makes us really close knit. And, and that's, you don't see that in other communities where people come and go and you know, they don't really care as much. So there's so much good things here and I think that that's something we can build on in the spring. And we can teach the rest of this the island and the state about the Hawaiian culture. You know? And that really, without that, we won't have a tourist industry. You know, we don't really have anything that makes Hawaii special. Um, and we lose um, what makes Hawaii Hawaii. So, I think that um, our community has a lot to show and share with us, this, the world. Precious, thank you so much. And I know what it's like to live, especially, I mean, you live in Makaha, it's even worse. But I went to Yolani and I lived in Waianae and I had to take that commute every day. And I really give you credit. What time do you get up in the morning? Yeah, that was me, 4 o'clock. 4 o'clock in the morning, getting up and leaving when it's dark, and then what time do you normally come home? Five. You're getting home when it's old, already nighttime. And uh, I really give you credit. That's a big sacrifice uh, for you to take. And I'm sure that your parents must be so proud of you. I mean, I can't even get up at four o'clock. <laughs> but it's going to pay off, you know, stay in school. Uh, the longer you stay in school and educate yourself, the more choices you're going to have, you know, when you get older. Um, you know, when you, having that piece of paper showing that you have an education opens doors. You know, without it, a lot of doors get closed. So stay in school as long as you can, keep your education as high as you can, and then you'll see. You, know, you can do what makes you happy when you get to it. Thank you so much. What, a, what an honor to meet you and your mother. I really enjoyed that. Thank you. Oh, yes. Well, good luck on your project. I'm sure it'll go well. Take care.